Hello and welcome to the course. My name is Doug and I'm one of the co-instructors of this online course on Asian American and US Latino Latino compared to popular cultures. So this is the first of three video lectures for week one. They're going to be concept and definition heavy, so please bear with us because we want to build a shared vocabulary for the course. So for this first video lecture, there are four key terms that you need to walk away with. Ideology, hegemony, resistance, and agency. So first up, ideology. Ideology will be defining as structured representations that put us in a relationship with power. So there are three aspects to this definition that you need to pay attention to. First of which is the fact that ideology is structured. When we talk about ideology as being structured, we're understanding ideology as not individual, even though it shapes the way that we understand the world. So ideologies take shape through a sort of majority logic by which they appear to make common sense to us. Secondly, ideologies are representations. As representations, ideologies construct images and narratives that stand in for social reality. As such, ideology is never transparent and as such is never fully accurate. It's always doing some kind of work. And thirdly, ideology works in relation to power. Power we can define as, on the one hand, control over meaning in terms of culture, and on the other hand, as control over human lives. So, for example, if we think about power in terms of influence, as we think about who has influence and who can influence issues of meaning making and human life, we can understand that power is not evenly distributed. So, ideology relates to hegemony. Hegemony refers to a theory of power that we'll be using in this course to understand the dynamics of culture. So there is a diagram here of the way that hegemony works. In hegemony, there is a dominant group and a subordinate group. The dominant group possesses more power than the subordinate group and as such can exercise that type of influence. On the one hand, the dominant group rules through discipline. So as we think about discipline, we'd be thinking about those actual material consequences that happen when one breaks the status quo. On the other hand, the dominant group manufactures consent from the subordinate group through the use of ideology. So a great way of understanding hegemony would be thinking about our own relationship to the law. On the one hand, if we break the law, there are very real consequences that take the form of discipline, whether it be, for example, fines or prison time. Actual things happen to us if we break this form of the social order. On the other hand, through ideology, all of the laws that we follow seem to make perfect sense. And as such, we give consent to the dominant group that this will be the way that things are run. So, hegemony works in this constant feedback loop of being ruled through discipline and consenting. However, hegemony is not fully perfect. As we think about ways of breaking hegemony, we can then think about counter-hegemonic resistance, through which the subordinate group refuses to give consent to the dominant group. As we think about popular culture, we'll be thinking about, on the one hand, the way that we come to uh, grant our consent through ideology, but on the other hand, how we break that consent through forms of resistance. This in particular is what Hebel Payan and Romero refer to on page six as the dialectical movement of appropriation and resistance. So now the final term is agency. As we think about hegemony as a theory of power, there's a question about where, where and how we as individuals fit. And that's where the real issue of agency comes up. We can define agency as the ability to make choices within the constraints of power. So as we think about, for example, whether or not we continue to grant our consent or whether we break consent through counter-hegemonic resistance, that comes down to the sort of choices that we can make. However, those choices are always under the pressure of dominant power and those sorts of consequences that will happen in case we do decide to resist the hegemonic power, the hegemonic order. As such, agency is not necessarily the same as resistance. Through the sorts of choices we can make, we can resist hegemonic power. However, 
we can just as easily choose not to resist and to continue to support the feedback loop of hegemony. So those are the four key terms that we'll be using to talk about these sorts of relations of power that Asian Americans and US Latinas and Latinas deal with in everyday life. 